Hello. We're going to the Indian state of West Bengal to look at a new take on a very old folk art tradition. And the art is referred to as uh, pots, and they are also known as pat chitra. Now, uh, pot is Sanskrit for cloth, and chitra means picture, or more specifically, painting in this case. And the pots are literally illustrated scrolls that are used as visual props for storytelling. I'm going to focus on two contemporary uh, poets, and these were made by the folk artist Sorna Chitrakar. One deals with AIDS, the other deals with the current COVID-19 pandemic. And what you're looking at here is a detail from the COVID boat that we're going to take a closer look at in a moment. Now, both of these boats are just two of many examples from across India of how folk art is being enlisted to spread public health awareness. And <clears throat> they're doing this, though, by, uh, while still being true to their stylistic roots. Combining art and narrative through song, Boats are executed, as you can see here, in bold blocks of color, very flat color, with uh, strong black outlines. This ensures their durability, uh, I'm sorry, visibility during performances. They're painted on paper and then they're affixed to cloth. Now, the way in which they are interacted with is that they're rolled and unrolled during performances and this actually degrades them and consequently uh, there are very few examples that predate the late 19th century. We think that the tradition uh, probably began in around the 13th century CE, although uh, some primary sources indicate that they were in use or a nascent form of them as early as the first century CE, making this form of art very old indeed. The historical painters of the pots are known as potwas. They're also called chitrakars, which literally means picture makers. In addition to painting the pots, they also perform them by singing the narrative a cappella. Here we see Swarna Chitrakar, who was born in 1974, and she's one of the most celebrated living uh, potwas. And um, she is well known uh, in certain communities, even internationally. And this is because she uh, is one of the first to address uh, very topical and international incidents through her work. And what this does is that it updates their tradition and ensures their relevance. Historically, the potwas were semi-itinerant and they would go from village to village and for a small fee, they would perform their boats. And historically, the, uh, the boats and the performances dealt predominantly with Hindu subjects, mostly, um, mostly mythology, or epics, and they still do. Uh, here, <clears throat> and um, Sorna Chitrakar still performs uh, in, in village settings throughout uh, West Bengal. In 2001, a Kolkata-based folk art curator was concerned that the, uh, that the pot tradition was dying out. And so with a small grant from the government, the curator uh, invited potwas who were then 
working outside of the tradition and educated them on AIDS awareness and worked with them to create quotes and uh, accompanying narratives to educate about AIDS. And um, they performed this to a great deal of success in villages throughout West Bengal. Swarna Chitrakar was one of these potwas. And here on her 2001 uh, pot that is called, Please People Listen, we see at the beginning, uh, so what would be unrolled and uh, shown to the audience first, we see this ogre-like figure that I call the AIDS Ashura or the AIDS demon. And he's got this maniacal, like evil look on his face, he's got horns. And um, you'll also notice that in his gaping maw, uh, there is a naked couple entwined. They're clearly having sex. Now, it's important to understand that in a popular public visual culture in India, um, such graphic scenes of sex are really unusual. What's more, for a woman, a young woman, as uh, Swarna Chitrakar was in um, 2001, to depict sex and then to publicly discuss it, uh, especially in a rural setting, would be considered really unladylike. So it really illustrates how bold she is because she's doing this for the greater good of AIDS awareness. So under the uh, under the uh, AIDS Ashura, uh, we've got uh, a woman, a bespectacled uh, matron, who seems to be lecturing to an assembly of younger women. This reflects uh, AIDS awareness in villages that was disseminated by. Um, gendered um, community leaders that were educated by the government at a grassroots level. And moving sequentially through this, the spatial, spatial cells, we see these couples kind of canoodling under a tree probably at night. And uh, then we see two space cells uh, of uh, condoms. Here we have a condom vendor. And notice the scale, the um, distorted scale of the condoms to really draw your attention to them. And as she was, just, as she was um, showing these, Swarna Chitrakar would be singing the narrative in very catchy, very memorable rhyming couplet in Bangla. And uh, down here, we have this uh, pile of bird's eye view of corpses and mourners as a cautionary tale, what happens when someone doesn't use the proper uh, prophylactics to stop the spread of the disease. By the way, the, um, these Boats are um, typically about 15 uh, feet in length. So it would take a long time to tell and show their, them in their entirety. So uh, cashing in on the success of the AIDS boats, and they were very successful, um, curators and NGOs uh, enlisted the potwas again in 2020, and they did this to um, spread awareness about the unfolding COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and again, they were targeting villages to do this. Again, uh, this is one of Swarna Chitrakar's uh, boats. 15, about 15 feet in length. And she explains through its length how it how the virus is spread and again how to how to stall it. 
Uh, so let's go in for a closer look at the top. Once again, we've got a very um, recognizable by now uh, villain, uh, what I call the COVID Ashura or the demon. It's really psychedelic looking here. And he's punctuated by all of these coronaviruses on his eyes, on his body. Uh, and we've got these two minions um, up in the corners that seem to be zapping people, um, making them ill. And I love this random figure of a young woman here who seems to be coughing a phlegm wad or something on the, on the red demon. And the next cell is didactic. How to stop the spread of COVID. Here we've got a hand pump that is immediately would be immediately recognizable to villagers. They're ubiquitous in, um, in villages. And um, Swarna Chitharkar would be discussing how to, to wash hands very thoroughly with soap. And it looks like this hovering coronavirus is thwarted and confused because it clearly has no host. Uh, we also see the cautionary moving downwards in visual and um, sung narrative. We have the cautionary tale of someone who's gotten sick and has gone to a hospital surrounded by all of these uh, doctors in their protective gear. Um, then we also see once, once more how to protect through mask wearing in this case. Uh, notice the hovering coronavirus that in its rays has all of these unmasked people um, entangled. And then the people who are wearing masks are untouched. Finally, it ends with perhaps a happy scene. We've got a defeated, um, kind of anthropomorphized COVID um, virus who is limping away, crying because he has no human host and people who are masked are going about their business in a bazaar. So uh, the, both of these uh, quotes, among many others that were dealing with um, public health issues, have been, especially in villages, very successful because they reach a particular audience. And <clears throat> the another uh, Podwa, whose name is Monimala Chitrakar, commented, quote, city people are educated and have access to all kinds of communications, such as movies in English or Hindi. But the scroll has a different sort of quality through which information can be understood and accepted. People like me only understand Bengali. When I sing and show the scroll, people are getting information in their own language in a way that they understand. And I think that quote is really telling. Swarna Chitrakar's folk style aids and COVID artworks instruct through familiar local visual languages that spread directly to its target rural audience. Their message is concise and I might add, backed by science. They are also literally illustrating the enduring relevance and adaptability of an Indian folk art.